Mr. President, on May 13, 1994, a senator from Illinois named Paul Simon was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Africa. His ranking Republican was Jim Jeffords of uh, Vermont. Jim Jeffords and Senator Paul Simon had been told that there was a looming genocide about to occur in Rwanda. They went on the phone together and spoke to General, UN General Romeo Dallaire in Kigali, Rwanda in May of 1930, 1994. They asked, what can we do to stop the killing in Rwanda? General Dallaire said, if you would send 5,000 uniformed troops, I can stop this genocide. Senator Simon and Jefferson wrote the Clinton White House immediately at that time and asked for the administration to call on the United Nations to act. Their letter said in part, obviously there are risks involved, but we cannot continue to sit idly by while this tragedy continues to unfold. The senators received no reply from the White House. In less than eight weeks, 800,000 Rwandans were massacred. Today, President William Clinton acknowledges he should have done more. We should have done more. What happened in Rwanda was a classic genocide. Mr. President, today what's happening in Syria may not meet the classic definition of a genocide, but it certainly meets every standard and every definition as the looming humanitarian crisis of our time. And the question before us in the United States is, what will we do? I think it has reached the point where we must act. And that's why I've joined with three of my colleagues, uh, fellow Democrat Tim Kaine of Virginia, Republicans Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, and John McCain of Arizona. We've written to President Obama, urging him to call together world leaders and to establish a humanitarian zone, a safe zone, a no-fly zone in Syria where modern medical treatment can be provided and displaced persons can escape. We think it should be done under the auspices, I do, of the United Nations, and that the United States could join other countries in providing a defensive security force. We need to turn to our NATO allies like Turkey. We need to reach out to Saudi Arabia, even Iran, and try to find an international consensus to spare the suffering and death which is occurring now for years in Syria. We don't know the exact number of casualties. We estimate that some 400,000 may have died in Syria. Millions have been displaced. This is a picture of just one of the refugee camps where the people of Syria have fled. I've visited camps like this in Turkey. They're in Lebanon and Jordan and they just can't accommodate all the people that are evacuating that country. Once every few months, a friend of mine comes to visit in Chicago. He is an extraordinary man. His name is Dr. Salul. He heads a, a group of Syrian Americans who travel to Syria on a regular basis. They have to sneak into the country, this war-torn country. As doctors, they're providing basic medical care to the victims of the violence that's taking place in Syria. Dr. Salul brings heartbreaking photographs to show me. The last photographs were of children who had been victims of barrel bombs, which Bashir Assad, the leader in Syria, drops on his own people. These are literally garbage cans filled with munitions and explosives that explode, killing civilian populations. Photos showed children who had been maimed lost their limbs, and some have been killed by these barrel bombs that continue. Now Assad has decided to up the ante. He's including chlorine gas in these barrel bombs as well. These doctors try to save these children and save these victims. Many times they're operating on tables in abandoned schools. They're begging for medicines, which are at a high premium, and many times they're not successful. What will we do? What can the United States do? I hope that we can be part of an effort, an international effort, to provide safe zones for medical treatment and for the displaced persons in Syria. I hope to join with others on a bipartisan basis in urging that alternative.